Today, North Korea pledges their support for the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Former Italian Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi dies, a new pro-EU party wins in Montenegro, Donald Trump is indicted again, and Nicola Sturgeon is arrested. From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Monday the 12th of June 2023. In a message this morning to mark Russia's National Day, the leader of North Korea, Kim Jong-un, pledged his full support for Putin's invasion of Ukraine. In this statement, the North Korean leader said, justice is sure to win, and the Russian people will continue to add glory to the history of victory. Over the last few months, North Korea has been accused of providing weapons to Russia, at the same time as building its arsenal of ballistic missiles and nuclear weapons. This is despite the UN Security Council explicitly not allowing this. The whole situation appears to be a development of the closer strategic cooperation that was called for in 2019 by Chairman Kim following a meeting with the Russian president. Following this meeting, he added that he would firmly hold hands with Putin. The fact that Russia is resorting to aligning with rogue nations such as North Korea is likely a sign of desperation especially given the reports that they're receiving weapons from Kim Jong-un's government. Before we continue with the briefing, I just wanted to let you know that our new show, TLDR's Race Across Europe, is now out on YouTube and Nebula. We'll share the full trailer at the end of the video, but please do check out the show if you haven't already. It's linked below. Thanks for your support. Italy's longest-serving post-war Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi has died aged 86. He'd been suffering from leukemia for some time, and recently battled a lung infection. Berlusconi rose to become a billionaire media mogul before entering politics and serving as Prime Minister in four governments for a total of nearly a decade between 1994 and 2011. He's credited with transforming Italy's political landscape, but his time in office was marred by scandals involving everything from sex parties involving minors to alleged corruption. In 2013, he was convicted of tax fraud and banned from public office for two years. His populist style, in many ways, provided a template for the likes of Donald Trump and others around the world. Even after his last prime ministerial term ended in 2011, Berlusconi continued to be a power player in Italy up until his death. He led his centre-right Forza Italia party into the 2022 election, after which the party went into coalition under Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney. Berlusconi did not take up a position in the government, but continued to play a prominent role as party leader and as a senator. Silvio Berlusconi's death will have a significant impact on Forza Italia, as he left no clear political successor. It likely will also shift the balance of power in Italy's right-wing governing coalition. So that's what's been happening in Italy today. Let's move and discuss what's been happening in Montenegro. After years of political deadlock in Montenegro, the small Balkan country held a snap parliamentary election on Sunday that delivered a victory to the Europe Now movement, a new centrist pro-EU party. Europe Now won around 25.6% of the vote, translating into 23 seats, while the Democratic Party of Socialists, or DPS, came in second place with around 23.8% and 21 seats. It's the first time in Montenegro's history that the DPS, which is also pro-European, has not placed first in an election. The parliamentary election came months after Europe Now defeated DPS in the presidential election, ending President Milo Dukanovic's three decades of political dominance. Despite coming first, Europe Now is far from having a majority in the 81-seat parliament, so will need to negotiate with other parties to form a government. The party's leader said, This is a great victory. We will speak with everybody who shares our values, but there will be no negotiations with the Democratic Party of Socialists. In third place was the pro-Serbian and pro-Russian for the future of Montenegro alliance. In fourth place was the pro-EU Liberal Democrats URA alliance, who will likely play a key role in forming a coalition. The alliance's leader said, there will be no government without our movement. 
On Friday, the former US President Donald Trump was charged with 37 counts of unauthorised possession of classified material. The first time any president or former president has been indicted on federal charges. With each of these charges, the former president faces the possibility of large fines or years in prison. There seems to be some debate about how strong the case against Trump currently is, with some of his allies suggesting that it's simply a political prosecution. Others seem to think that the case shouldn't be too difficult for the prosecution to win. Diana Florence, a former prosecutor in the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, said that the case was a slam dunk, arguing that it's got everything. It's got videos. It's got recorded conversation. It's got lower-level employees who were testifying. In some of the most shocking details of the case, it was reported that the former president took documents relating to the US's nukes, with details in these documents outlining the vulnerability of both the US and its allies' nuclear weapons programs. We'll update you on any further developments in this story. The last few days in British politics have been really dramatic. Going into the weekend, the biggest story was Boris Johnson's resignation from Parliament. But we're not going to talk about that here. For more on Johnson's bombshell resignation and the turmoil in the Conservative Party, we'll have a full video over on the TLDR News UK channel coming out on Tuesday. Somehow, that wasn't the only dramatic UK news from the weekend, though. On Sunday, Scotland's former First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, was arrested by police as part of an investigation into the ruling Scottish National Party's finances. She was later released without charge pending further investigation. Sturgeon is now the third SNP figure to have been taken into police custody as part of the probe. Her husband, Peter Morell, who is the SNP's former chief executive, and Colin Beatty, then SNP treasurer, were both arrested and questioned by police in recent months and were released pending further investigation. Sturgeon, who now sits as a backbench member of the Scottish Parliament, said her arrest was a shock and deeply distressing, adding that she is certain she has committed no offence. Police are looking into claims that £600,000 in donations for an independence campaign were misused by the party. The arrest of Sturgeon puts pressure on her successor, First Minister Hamza Youssef, as opposition politicians and some in the SNP call for Sturgeon to be suspended from the party while the investigation continues. We'll end the main section of the daily briefing with an uplifting update to a story we mentioned a few weeks ago. Four Colombian children who survived a plane crash and then 40 days in the Amazon jungle have been rescued and reunited with their family. The children, aged 13, 9, 4 and just under 1 years old, are from an indigenous community and use their knowledge of the rainforest to survive on things like cassava flour, fruit and seeds. Sadly, the children's mother and two pilots died in the crash on the 1st of May. The huge search and rescue operation involved dozens of soldiers, locals, sniffer dogs, aircraft and more. The children's grandfather said that they were shattered but in good hands and it's great they're alive. President Gustavo Petro said they were alone. They themselves achieved an example of total survival which will remain in history. OK, so as promised, before we go, here's a trailer for TLDR's Race Across Europe. To celebrate the 10,000th order from the TLDR merch store, we committed to hand-delivering orders to a bunch of real TLDR fans. So we split into three teams, assigned points to each delivery location on the map, and let teams try to score as many points as they could in just 30 hours. The problem? Well, only one team is allowed to make each delivery, and any team which doesn't make it to the location of the 10,000th order by the end of the game is disqualified. Welcome to TLDR's Race Across Europe. I'm speed demon now. Okay. Why is British transport the worst? Oh no! I might be fuming if they beat us this one. Zach is obviously thinking, he's like, nah, Ben's not a threat, nah, 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 you know? You're going to look like idiots when we lose. <laughs> Have you spoken to any other teams? Guys, it's not looking good. And uh, thank you for ruining our journey. This is the worst thing that could have happened. And I wouldn't put it past him, he's a spiteful little What? What do you mean? What? 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 How does that happen? We've come through some kind of police barricade. Genuinely, very much an open <laughs> question as to whether or not Jack gets back to the UK anytime soon. Yeah. But it was within an, an hour. hour. That's not possible. Did you have a ticket? Who's got the tickets? Oh, I'm so sorry. 
Now, we'd absolutely love if you'd check out the series. It's linked below and you can find the first episode on the TLDR EU YouTube channel. If you want even more though, the second episode is available a week early on Nebula and we'll be releasing every subsequent episode a week early on Nebula too. It's not just the race that's on Nebula either. We also publish an extended version of the daily briefing on Nebula each and every day, with today's extended edition featuring a discussion about the first episode of TLDR's Race Across Europe. It, it was rough. It sucked. Oh, I felt sick. Oh, so That's because we're a family. That's the streaming service we're building with a bunch of our creator friends, many of whom you're likely to be already watching. That means that by signing up, you not only get an extended ad-free daily briefing every single day, you also get to watch exclusive and ad-free videos from the best educational creators on YouTube. That's things like real life law's incredible modern conflicts, which breaks down contemporary disputes around the world, Neo's underexposure, which beautifully dives into complex and shadowy topics you've always wanted to know more about, or extremities from Wendover Productions, which uncovers some of the world's most remote places. All of these are only available on Nebula, just like our extended daily briefings and a whole bunch of other exclusive TLDR content which never comes to YouTube. If you want to sign up, use the link in the description so that they know you came through us. That helps us out a whole lot, as does watching on Nebula more generally. So thanks for signing up and we'll see you on Nebula.